In this video I want to take a look at question 10a from the 2016 Higher Level Construction Studies paper. This has become a really popular question over the last number of years and always involves some element of passive house design. In this question we have uh, highlighted that we're minimizing, minimizing heat loss and storing heat gain and it's a passive house design. We're looking for best practice and uh, we want to be able to maximize the heat storage in the passive house and it gives us options here, three options, and we have to pick two of the following options, whether it's foundation, uh, ground floor, or walls. So we have these three choices, we, make, we must answer two of those, and it's about best practice, and minimizing heat, and maximizing heat gain. The part B of the question then is to do with overheating. We have to discuss two reasons why overheating may Occur or occurs and using notes and freehand sketches to design details uh, to reduce the possibility of overheating. And part C is we want to look at two advantages and two disadvantages of making every passive house standard as a planning requirement for all new houses in Ireland. So I'm just taking the, uh, the first part. I'm not going to bother with the foundations. I'm going to pick the ground floor and it's the first detail that I'm going to draw. So a very straightforward, just a, a basic sketch is always required with the key elements in this here. Um, there is a number of elements that are uh, standard across passive houses and what we want to do is we want to show some of them here in our sketch for the ground floor. There's no need for the foundation. It's just the, the ground floor that I'm focused on here. So uh, you can see that I have the concrete slab drawn in there and insulation above and below it. My broken line here is showing the DPM insulation is on the, in the, the cavity uh, I don't really need to go into the external wall and I'm hatching the aerated block which com continues up onto floor level reducing the thermal bridge there the depth of insulation even though it may not be to scale I've indicated that it's 200 millimeters the concrete slab 150 uh, and then insulated upstand of 80 millimeters and uh, 200 millimeters in the, the cavity and I have my air tightness strip as well too placed in along here and I've just used a couple of colours to make it stand out off the, on the page and uh, that's basically my sketch so for each of these here you're looking roughly half marks for the sketch and half for your note so in a passive house the principles are to let as much solar heat in trap the heat with the extra insulation and the insulation as I've indicated in the drawing here is a minimum of 200 millimetres I have the upstand which uh, again I'm just indicating here with a note as 80 millimeters to prevent the thermal bridge between the floor and the wall. Use the aerated block under the floor level to prevent thermal bridge as well and use air tightness barrier between the junction of the wall and the floor. Uh, this will prevent any air, air, hot air escaping and uh, reduces the heat loss. So then the next one then the option I'm picking here is a wall and you may wonder why I didn't bother with the foundation. Well, I've picked what I feel would have been the simplest uh, of the drawings to, or drawn details to do. So in this here, again, a little bit of color to make it stand out. I have a cavity wall um, showing render on the outside and I'm showing where I would have uh, my air tightness barrier as well too and the thickness of insulation. So again, just to make it stand out on the page, I'm not bothered putting in the details this time. I'm using numbers here, one, two, and three and then what I'll do is I'll include my note below this here. So in the passive house, the internal leaf should be used to act as a storage heater or a provide thermal mass. It absorbs the passive heat from the sun and it releases it back into the house at night time. And this is best achieved using concrete or masonry as it has a high thermal mass. The second, as indicated in the diagram, it should be airtight. The wall should be airtight. So as it can trap the warm air inside. And special care should be taken around openings, windows, doors and junctions between floor and wall and ceiling and wall. So it's just highlighting another one of the key features in passive house design is a high level of air tightness. And the last point that I was making there with the insulation in the cavity. Now this may not be uh, uh, enough. I could have actually drawn it with a 
service cavity on the internal part of the wall and show an extra insulation in that there but we can have external wall insulation which could be added to that but you're looking at a minimum of 200 millimeters and that's the idea is to trap and keep the heat inside in the house and it's of paramount importance to reduce the heat loss through the wall part b of the question uh, is looking for two reasons why overheating occurs so this is kind of just a written answer so as the house has a large glazed area of windows facing south or southwest to maximize the solar heat gain this can cause a problem in the summer as the sun is stronger and it allows more heat into the house causing overheating so very simple answer and part uh, the two second reason that i would give for overheating as a passive house is designed to be airtight it doesn't allow heat to escape or cool air to enter the building and this can cause the house to overheat in summer okay somebody might say well technically i suppose you have an mhrv uh, but the air will be at a warmer temperature than it would normally be say in winter time so we have to provide a couple of design features here now so i'm just sketching a very basic layout of a house and what i want to show in this here is an extended eaves which can be used to uh, provide shade from a high summer sun and still allow the low winter sun to get in so you can see i just adjusted my sun to the angle of the sun and it doesn't look at it it's, it's not absolute reality here you're just absolutely showing the principle as to what it actually does it's reflecting the heat off and allowing a minimum amount of heat in during the summer or solar heat gain so by extending the eaves of the roof on the south face or the south side it prevents a strong summer sun shining directly into the house at midday and it'll allow low summer sun to shine in and it gives it maximum solar heat gain of course you need thermal mass in the floors to reflect the heat back as well too but that's sufficient to show one design which will actually reduce our overheating Uh, the second design that I'm going to show here now is going to take two sketches. So I'm going to draw the, just the outline of the two sketches so I have a kind of a, a good similarity between the two sketches for comparison. And again, the same basic shape of a house with a window opening in it. I'm not terribly worried about showing an extended eaves in this here. It's just the, the principle of what I'm showing here, how the the solar heat gain can be reduced so i've got a tree a deciduous tree planted in proximity to the windows that glazing so it actually acts as a barrier or a filter or if you want to say a diffuser of light so it would reduce the amount of heat getting in through the uh the leaves the and the deciduous tree and then during the winter time the lower angle of elevation of the sun the leaves are no longer on the tree and it allows all the light to penetrate through and you can see that i've shown that there with the arm the arrows going through there other things could be offered, like a breeze soleil and things like that there, but these are quite easy to show in a sketch. And we're on to the last part of the question here. There's two advantages and two disadvantages. So, like I said, and some of these other questions, if you can mirror what they're actually asking you, it makes it easier for the examiner to mark as well. So the advantages are, uh, it's very obvious to reduce the need for fossil fuels and heating the house, cuts down on CO2 emissions, which helps to reduce the global warming, and it saves the homeowner money in the long run and by reducing the cost of heating of their house greatly. Disadvantages are that initial cost in any passive build is considerably higher, but over time it reduces then in the, in the cost. So it might not be affordable to everybody starting out. Uh, and then it requires a highly skilled construction force and design team and these workers might be hard to get and more costly too. So when answering this uh, type of question, passive house, key things are orientation, f face and south, air tightness, you know, um, mechanical heat recovery ventilation systems, super insulation, thermal mass, extra insulation, reduced thermal bridges. And when you're answering this, keep sketches simple but effective. Show the sun path and south and all the sketches and practice the sketches that you need to do for these types of things and make sure that you label them as well. And always mirror whatever the question is. Make sure that you, you uh, mirror that with your answer to make it uh, the best possible outcome for yourself.